What do you make of this BRICS? Because uh, this has been in the news lately, B-R-I-C-S. It's an acronym. It's for a group of the world's leading emergent market le- leaders, including our economies, naming um, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Um, yes. This this sort of group is getting together, got together recently, and seems to be wanting very much to pose a threat to our role as the economic leader of the free world. So what what should we be thinking about BRICS? Yeah, so this is a, a really a ragtag group of individuals. I've sort of compared it to um, Dorothy and Oz working with a tin man, a cowardly lion, and a scarecrow. Go, how do these people all you know fit together? But what they were trying to do was they're trying to take down the the all powerful Oz that was controlling everything. And the BRICS, which was really an idea that came out of a Goldman Sachs research paper that came into this organization, you know, they said they wanted to give themselves more of a voice and more power on the global stage. And what we learned out of their meeting that happened just over a week ago now uh, is that they're looking to expand their group. So they have put out invitations to another sort of ragtag group of countries, which includes Saudi Arabia, Iran, the UAE, Argentina, Ethiopia, and Egypt. So they're really looking to expand their heft. And I do think that China is engineering a lot of this. Um, Certainly countries around the world are frustrated with the U.S. because, as I said, we've been at the center of the global financial universe. We hold the global reserve currency. And with that, the Federal Reserve is supposed to hold that currency stable because it means that um, commodities around the world are priced in uh, like things like oil and food are all priced in dollars. And so if the dollar shifts wildly, it has a recourse for those countries who are big importers. So the Fed, who sometimes has to make trade-offs between keeping the dollar stable for our economy here domestically in the world stage, has done the amazing job of doing neither. Right. They've killed the purchasing power here in the United States. You know, your dollar is not stable against a bag of groceries anymore. And the same thing on the world stage. So you have these these countries like China who are huge em- importers of oil and food going like we, we can't do this. this. This is a threat to our own economic security and national security. And then you had something that the Biden administration uh, that something that they undertook that I think is really the point of no return here. And that's when Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, United States led a coalition to say, Russia, you can no longer have a- access to your reserves. And so if people are keeping money in dollar reserves, um, U.S. Treasuries and the like, and the U.S. can then all of a sudden cut off your access at their whim, you know, that is fully weaponizing the power of the dollar. And what countries want to give the United States that power to just be able to cut you off from the money that you're storing in their currency, which, by the way, has given them a huge benefit in terms of cheap financing of the the Mm. U.S. government. So there is this push coming from China to try to have less, not only reserves, but trade happening in terms of the U.S. dollar. A lot of these countries have been loading up on gold as a mechanism to perhaps loosely back this trade. And the most significant development you know, of the ones I just talked about is really Saudi Arabia coming into that fold, which I think has a lot to do with the green push. You know, we're trying to move away from energy. Saudi Arabia uh, has been our ally and has been agreeing to price everything in dollars. And they've been uh, plowing their extra dollars, which are considered petrodollars from the oil back into U.S. treasuries. If we are saying, well, we don't want to do this long term and China's a big oil importer and some of these other countries, they want to get their their footing secure. Um, you know, again, this is shoring up their own economy. So we continue to make these decisions, you know, whether it, on a domestic basis or on the world stage that are just economic suicide you know, for the country overall. But particularly, we know that that's going to fall on the middle class. Hmm. Well, and I know that you've been drawing attention to the middle class and the struggle to get housing uh, and get mortgages. And unfortunately, this is something that, you know, seems kind of part of the plan. Again, not to sound conspiratorial, but it does seem to be part of the plan um, that you will own nothing, including a home. 